We got our own mother of the house, if you will. I know some of you are older and, you know, you could be the mama of the house, but, you know. I know some churches are big on, and I get it, first lady. Well, she is my first wife and only wife, hallelujah. And she is the first lady, if you will, of the firehouse church. But we are honored and blessed to have her here. Her family's honored, blessed to have her, the wife that she is, the mother, the nana, everything else, all that she does here, and leading worship, taking us to the throne. And I was joking with her last night, how many pages you got? <laughs> I'm not going to preach over an hour, don't worry about it. <laughs> but you got a team. But anyway, let's welcome Pastor Sharp this morning as she preaches God's word to us and honor the Lord Jesus Christ for this gift that he's blessed us with. It is a humbling honor to stand here, and I don't ever take it lightly. And as Pastor says, yeah, I don't get behind the pulpit as much as he does and, and preach like he does. So I am thankful, and I am so grateful to the Lord that he had given me the title of the message, actually, when we were in the hospital with Elijah. And it was actually right before we went in, as I was just really still praying and seeking him in such a... A deeper realm than I had ever gone and seeking him before for an answer to prayer for Elijah. And so um, going through that, it didn't go the way that I was believing, but the Lord had dropped in my spirit uh, the title to my message. And I said, okay, Lord, I understand where you're going. So I just allowed him to be who he desires to be in me and just let myself die to myself and not question him anymore and say, okay, you are a big God and I know that you know what you're doing, so that's going to settle it and I'm just going to stay right there and just leave it at his feet. So I did. And so I just thank him for this word that he gave because it ministered to me as well as I believe with all my heart is going to minister to you because we are on the same heart, the same page. And when you pray for each one of us, you know that God hears your prayers as he hears ours because we need it. We need your prayers. And we are still standing because of the prayers of the saints and your love for us. And we're grateful for it. I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for it. But before we get ready to preach this word, I, I just want to pray over it. Lord, I just thank you for this word that is going to be life-changing yes. in our lives. Because it has changed my life in the last couple of weeks. And the way that I have seen things and the way that I have spoken things. And I thank you for your fresh revelation. And your word, God, is just going to come forth and bring new life, new life in each of our hearts today. In each circumstance and situations that we are going through today. And Lord, we give you praise, glory, and we honor you and thank you for this word. I thank you for your anointing upon the word. I thank you for your anointing upon me. And, and Holy Spirit, speak through me today. Let only what you desire, Lord, to be spoken, be spoken. And Lord, I just thank you for freely moving in this place today. For I give you total freedom and liberty to move however you choose to move. Yes. And this is the day that you have blessed us with. And we are thankful and grateful and rejoicing in you this day. And rejoicing in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As I began to seek the Lord when, yes, my husband asked me a long time ago to speak. And instantly, you know, your flesh wants to rise up. And I'm like, ah, no, nah, you can get somebody else. That's okay. You know, there's plenty of others here that can preach the word uh, and preach it with such power and anointing as well. Because there's so many that are called to, to preach the word of God. But I said, okay, Lord, I will quickly say yes to you and step back out of the way. And so he began to minister to me, as I said, that time of prayer with uh, seeking him for Elijah. And this is my opening scripture, and it's, it's long, but it's so powerful. And I don't want to give you my title yet, because after I read Paul's prayer here in Ephesians, he said, this is the meaning of what you've just read. 
and I never thought about it like that before, so that's where my title came from. And so, in Ephesians 1, 17 through 23, this is Paul's prayer. It says, so that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance among the saints and what is the surpassing greatness of his power yes. toward us who believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Read that again. That's going to be a key here. Mm -hmm. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he performed in Christ when he raised him from the dead Hallelujah. and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and power and might and dominion in every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come and he put all things in subjection under his feet and made him the head over all things for the church which is his body yes, yes. here we are the fullness of him who fills all things in all ways. I know that's a lot to chew on. And I read it a few times. I said, Lord, that's a huge chunk to use as an opening scripture. He said, yeah, but see what happens is you just read and that's it. So I read it again. He said, now you just read it and that was it. Third time is a charm. Hallelujah. I read it again. I said, oh, I'm really listening now, Lord. He said, do you really realize what the power of that prayer that Paul prayed for you? For the church. For the church. He said, when you prayed for Elijah to not have to go down that road of getting that GJ tube, he said, when I told you that it was still a road you'd have to go down, though you were praying against it, and you weren't understanding why you were to go down this road, but you said, I will trust you anyway, Lord. Amen. And I did. I did. And I still am. And I still will. That will not change. And so I sat there just crying and crying. I'm trying to get my message together, trying not to get overwhelmed. The day's going to come here on the 9th of September, and I'm not sure what's going on, Lord, but you do. You know. And I'm about to go to the hospital. About a two days visit ended up being a nine-day stay. So there was more time to prepare for this taken away. And so I said, okay, Lord, I'm listening. He said, just as my son went to the cross for you, he even asked if there was any other way. Right. He, he, he didn't want to go down that road. Right. But I, as his heavenly father, said that was the only way. He said the same for you. Nobody will know your pain. That's right. But me. I knew what you felt when the road that you were going down was not what you desired and believed for. And stood on his word and his promises. For whatever reason, I don't know if being a child makes it harder than being an adult. I don't know. But something about a grandparent that when it's your grandbaby, right. there's nothing like it. And I couldn't understand. I had the faith. I still have the faith. And I still believe. That's and right. I still trust in him. That's not changed. Right. And he said, but I want to teach you something through this. Are you ready to be open and teachable and listen to me? And I said, absolutely, Lord, because I know that you know what's going on and I don't. He said, but you have to realize the end result. 
See, you're only focusing on right now this hurt, this pain that you're going through, and the not understanding. But can I tell you the end result? will be mighty. It will be more powerful just as the end result for my son who went to the cross for you, who went to the cross for your child, for your grandchild. And I said, thank you, Lord. That brought such joy and excitement to me. It revived me. He said, but what you need to see, Charlotte, is in the end result, what happened? He said, what happened? My son rose again yes. from the grave with a resurrection power where all things, all things will be subject to him. They've been under the ground, but under his feet, they were nailed to the cross, knowing the victory's already yours. Amen. Do you believe it? Yes. Do you receive it? Yes. I said, yes, I do, Lord. Yes. He says, so this is the title of your message. His resurrection power is our way maker. That's good. It is. How I got all that, or he got all that out of all those scriptures. But he said, I need you to see what's inside there. That was a lot to take, a lot to chew. He says, but I'm going to sum it all up in one title. Yep. My son's resurrection power is our way maker. I said, thank you, Lord. The first thing he said you need to know as his resurrection power is truly our way maker where there is no way. Amen. It's his resurrection power that makes that way. It's his resurrection power that's going to press in, press on, and press through no matter what you go through, no matter what you face, no matter what diagnosis you have been given. Come on. Come on. It's not going to matter. Amen. No matter how low your blood pressure may go, right. the resurrection power of Jesus Christ lives and dwells inside of Jenny, who is Amen. making a way now That's for right. it to come back up where it belongs. Because he's the way maker. Right. His resurrection power makes that way available for us. Amen. To know him for who he is. To know him for who he is. We need to know him for who he is. His resurrection power is truly our way maker. Yes. Sitting at his feet with an open teachable heart to truly know him for who he is. Mm, for each one of you. Personally. See that's the key right there. The Lord I said you know I, all of a sudden I, you know you want to get ahead of the Lord and talk about the body of Christ and we're one in unity and the power and the agreement. Blah. He's like, no, 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 you need to just step back a few steps. Yeah. <laughs> it's you and me first. Amen. It's you and me first. Amen. That's where it begins. And then I set the body into place as each one has their time with me. So that's how the power of agreement can come. That's how my resurrection power can rise up within the body of Christ where I can come and make a way where there is no way. That's right. But you have to know it personally yourself. Amen. It starts personally with you. To truly know him for who he is for you personally and then as one body in unity. How powerful this is if we could see truly the resurrection power in each one of us. His power that comes forth as we come together as one with him personally yeah. and one in the body of Christ. Will the resurrection power that lives and dwells inside of each one of us will truly begin to make a way where there is no way oh, in every yeah. circumstance, in every Amen. sickness, every diagnosis that has come your way. I said, thank you, Lord. Woo, hallelujah. Yes. What a powerful, powerful prayer. If we really read this, what Paul prayed over us, that is a spiritual wisdom prayer. Yes. There's much wisdom there, the Lord told me. Read that. I know it's a lot, but there, the, when it just came alive off the page for me, it transformed me that day. And I was so thankful that he showed me something new that I had never seen before. It is his number one desire, the Lord's number one desire, for us to be able to truly see the power of the cross and what he did for each one of us. Philippians 3.10 
says to know him and the power of his resurrection yes. and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Yes. See, we put our trust in him, but then he says, Charlotte, not only do you have to put your trust in me, in order for you to experience it, that's when the power, the resurrection power, will rise up within you because he's called us not just to hear about it, he's called us not just to read about it, but he's called us to experience it. Yes. We need to experience that resurrection power that lives and dwells inside of each one of us. Amen. If Jesus has gone to the cross for you and you have said yes to him, then through the power of his blood that was shed on the cross, he died for each one of you for three days. And then he rose again with such power. It's a resurrection that brings forth life. Yeah. Life in yeah. every area of your circumstance and situation. Life into every sickness and death has to bow to the name of ah. Jesus. If there's life in a death can't stay. That's right, right. That's right. It's a that just popped up from nowhere. Well, we know that nowhere's the pit of hell. Right. So I said, the Lord says, do you want and do you believe it can pop right back down to the pit of hell? Yes, I, I said, yes, I do. He said, the only way you can do that and believe for it is through the resurrection power of who right. my son Amen. is for you and for your grandson that it will make a way for that to happen because yeah. he is the way maker. Right. Yeah. Yes. I said, thank you, Lord. I believe I believe. He said, the, the way you begin to believe is, see, it's already been nailed to the cross. So yeah. that Cornelius delaying disorder, it's just right there at the top of the cross. And the Lord took care of it over 2,000 years ago. Yes! So it's a done deal! I know what the resurrection power of Jesus has already done. And the way's already been made. I've grabbed a hold of it. I believe it. And it will come to pass. Because it's the word of God, not my words. Right. It's his word. And I'm going to hold him to it. And I'm going to take him at it. All it right. will come to pass. And what a beautiful, powerful testimony my grandson will have. Amen. He will stand behind a pulpit and preach the gospel of what God said. When man says, not going to happen. But God said, and it did happen. Through the resurrection power that lives and dwells in my grandson as well as all of us. Amen. Right. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Mm. Lord. Letting go of our sinful nature. It's the sufferings. That's the hardest part. And I said, Lord, he said, think about crucifying. He was crucified on the cross. He had to crucify his flesh because he really didn't want to go down that road neither. Right. You know, and I said, okay, Lord, it's crucifying our flesh, dying to our sin, dying to our thoughts, thinking, how is this going to work out? How are you going to come through this way? You know, God, all the odds are against us. He said, well, praise God, that gives me more glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it's all in how you think and all in how you speak is when that true resurrection power can rise up in you and make a way as, our, as your way maker. <clears throat> Letting go of our sinful nature, putting on the nature of Christ through crucifixion, through crucifying our flesh, who is the hardest thing to do. And you know what, folks? You, you can't tell me that just because you've been serving the Lord 30 years, you sometimes don't have to crucify sometimes. Because nah, you're lying. Nah. 
That'll preach. <laughs> You're lying. Because you know what? We're all human, and we all go right. through things. And you know, going through what we have just gone through with Elijah, I'm telling you what, our flesh was beyond, beyond beaten up and beyond weak. But I tell you, we called out for you saints to say, pray for us. Yes. We need your prayers. We are going through a major battle, and we need prayers because prayer warriors, that's when the resurrection power rises up within us. We Amen. come together in complete total unity, and the Lord gets the victory in it all. Right. Amen? Amen? When we come before him with surrendered hearts, the resurrection power will live in us and through us in our daily lives, fully surrendering to him. He said, Charlotte, in order for that to really truly work, what I placed inside of you, which is the resurrection power of my son, because he lives and dwells inside of you, you've got to stay surrendered to me. You've got to stay in that secret place on your knees, giving everything to me. All your questions. And I'll tell you times he won't give you answers, and then there are times he will give you answers. Right. But whether he answers you or not, will you yeah. still be able to trust him? Will you still be able to walk in faith knowing and believing that he is making that way possible for you in the impossible? Amen. Some things we have to take a step back, and I don't understand, even with my Jace in January. Don't understand it. Right. But you know what's inside you is always going to come out. Right. And so the only thing I could begin to tell the Lord was how good he was. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. He's so good. And so instead of letting the enemy take me down a road to where I wanted to be upset with God, the Lord quickened in my spirit. And he said, did you say you trusted me? I said, yes, Lord. He said, then that's all you need to do. Hallelujah. And then I stopped questioning him, yeah. not understanding, but I fully trusted him. Was I still hurt? Was I still broken? Absolutely. My heart was shattered like a piece of glass that just hit a, a concrete floor, and it was thousands of pieces everywhere. And that's what I told him. I said, Lord, I, I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. This is what I'm feeling right now. And my prayer time, and he said, oh, that is beautiful. And I thought for my second, what on earth is the Lord saying? I thought, I've done lost my mind. He said, no, I want you to think for a minute. He said, look at all those thousands of, and I'm seeing this in the spirit realm. Right. Look at all those thousand little pieces that have been shattered in this heart of yours that's truly mine. And because it's my heart, he said, you are going to allow me to pick each one back up and put it back together again and renew it with my breath of life because I will breathe life back in to your broken heart. And I said, Lord, that is beautiful. He said, but what I want you to see most of all through it all is I want you to see that even though your heart is shattered and it's broken and it's in pieces on this floor, he said, look at the way it still sparkles and shines for me and how pleased I am for it. See, when you can shine still through a broken, shattered heart that only God can put back together again, that's when you can see truly the beauty of who he is. He's still a good God. Amen. And his goodness is never, ever going to change no matter what you face and what you go through or what you hear diagnosis-wise. It's his word, and it's yes. never going to change. Amen. Amen. I said, thank you, Lord. That was awesome. I needed that. See, it's important when you stay at his feet. Let him minister to you, church. Amen. Let him minister to you, because sometimes through all of our hurt and pain, I don't know what to always just say when I feel your hurt and pain. I just want to love on you and <laughs> hug on you and just say, it's going to be okay. And it really is going to be okay. Yeah. It just might not be as quick as we want it to be okay. Right. Right. But it's going to be okay because he already took it to the cross. It's already been done. It's already got the victory. It's his resurrection power in us that gives us that way as he becomes our way maker. Amen. 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 The second thing he said is, Charlotte, you've got to learn to walk it out. you got to walk in it. You've got to walk in that resurrection power. Yeah. He said, I've called you to walk it out. I've called you to walk in it. 
The power of the Holy One lives and dwells inside of you. Walking in his resurrection power is what he has called each one of us to. You need to see the word of God and hear it and what it's saying to you. As you can see it, as you can hear it, and then it begins to speak to you, then you're going to be able to receive it with a heart of faith. And with that heart of faith, then you're going to be able to believe it. And then the resurrection power will rise up within you and come alive within you. And it'll put your faith in that place where he's called it to be, where all things will truly be possible for you if you do believe. Amen. 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 I said, Lord, I thank you for that. That was good. I thought, yep. See, again, we read it. We see it. We read it. We see it and we read it. Well, I've seen it and I've read it, but it's not doing anything. It's not going anywhere. And so you have to sit and meditate and ponder on it and think about it and not be in such a hurry. Because that's when the Lord really wants to get your attention. I tell you, the times I feel like I'm in a hurry, he'll quicken in my spirit and pull me back. And I'm like, Lord, do you know da 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 No, not that he doesn't know at all, but he does. But he'll really begin to speak to you in those places. Turning things around in our lives with our words of faith that will back up our talk and walk with his resurrection power. It truly does bring forth life and not death. It truly does bring forth blessings and not cursings. I tell you, God doesn't want you to be cursed, but I tell you, sometimes the way that we speak, we curse ourselves or we curse others. But if the resurrection power is truly within us and we are to walk it out, then we should be able to continually speak life into circumstances, life over every circumstance and situation, life into someone's life and not death. John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and are life. That's right. That's right. He lives in us and reveals his truth to us, and then he enables us to respond to that truth. The truth is the only way he's called us to live, and that is a life of love. It's his truth that will help you, that will reveal things to you, that you will be able to walk it out and walk in the love of God that's going to go against your flesh, crucifying that flesh, and walking in the love that he truly demonstrated on the cross for each one of us. So when doubt or unbelief, this was good. I said, oh, this is good, Lord. So when doubt or unbelief want to try to creep up and tell you that "Mm, this is not going to happen. No, that's not going to go that direction. No, the doctor said that. No, your workplace said this. You tell that fear to go. Because that's what doubt and unbelief is. It's fear. It's fear. Downright fear. It cannot stay in a heart of faith that walks in his resurrection power, knowing that God has already made a way for you in this circumstance and situation. He is your way maker, kicking out all the lies from the pits of hell that the doubt and unbelief may try to put in your heart. Your faith is activated in God's power. The same way fear activates the enemy's power. But God says that that fear the enemy wants to place within us is contaminated faith. Mm -hmm. And that is not what he's called our hearts to hold. He doesn't call our hearts to hold any kind of contaminated faith. And that's fear. That's doubt. That's unbelief. The Lord says, fear not, believe only, and you shall be delivered from death and all of its effects. Revelations 1.18. Fear not, believe only that you have been made well and you are healed. I'm well and I have been made whole and healed. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Fear not, believe only, and God will supply all of your needs. Ephesians 4.19. Fear not, and believe only, for I am strong Ephesians 6 10 fear not and believe that I am prosperous
1st Joshua 1 18 fear not and believe that he is your savior your resurrected king your source yeah. and your supplier yeah. be not fearful says the Lord as he has placed that faith inside of you nothing shall be impossible Hallelujah. if you believe yeah. nothing Amen. nothing why not let the odds come against you so God can show up? Amen. He'll show up with his resurrection power, That's right. making that way available to you. Yeah. Mm, thank you, Lord. Woo. Nothing shall be impossible to those who believe and that he will always make a way as you know who he truly is for you. The way maker with his resurrection power that lives inside of you, bringing forth his healing power to every area of your life and knowing that your needs have all been met and knowing that through that you have the freedom, freedom in all areas of your life, knowing that he has set you free through his resurrection power. Okay. He has made the way possible for you if you only believe. Believe and desire it. See, we, we can believe things. We can hear the word of God and, and we can have it penetrate our hearts. But do we really allow it to bring forth the life and the freedom? And even though we're going to go the direction that we're not wanting, just as the Lord had spoken to me for my Elijah, I felt the love of God like I never felt before when he allowed me to feel his heart. As he told his son, this was the only way. And when I felt that love and I thought, oh my goodness, Lord, you really do know what my heart feels like right now. Thank you for his resurrection power. Yes. I'm excited. Yes. I'm excited. I'm expecting the unexpected because of his resurrection power that lives right. and dwells inside of each one of us. You should be excited when you leave this place knowing what's inside to come forth to pray for those that you go pray with and out in the marketplaces, out in the workplaces. Be excited to know it is not you. It is the greater one inside of you. Amen. The, the one that brought life to you. The one that brings health and healing to you. That's who lives and dwells inside of you to be able to use you for his kingdom and for his glory. Yes. Amen. The third one, the Lord said, is stay hungry and seeking him. Yeah. When you stay hungry and seeking him, his resurrection power will continually rise up within you. But you have to be hungry and thirsty for it. You have to seek him continually on a daily basis. And you know, sometimes we can get ourselves in such a ritual, and it's amazing that the Lord talked about John, he really gave that prophetic word. That was for me about that change quick. This was a quick change for me to be able to put something together in a couple of days because my husband's right. I've always had to have a month to get it together. Why, I have no idea, but that's just the way I am. But the Lord would not allow me every time I felt like I was hitting up against a brick wall till Friday. I'm like, I don't, I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going this direction. Maybe this isn't what you want me to speak, but he wouldn't give me anything else new. And I'm like, Lord, I do not know what you're doing, but he wouldn't speak to me. He didn't give me any clues. He just said, are you willing to step out in faith and just go with a few things I'm going to give you? And that's it. I said, yes, Lord, I'm going to give you. You reap what you Stay sow, baby. hungry, absolutely. <laughs> Seeking him. And I said, and that's when he said, well, you know what? You are hungry for me as you seek me. And just because I had some things a little, I had to readjust in my life and we went down a path I didn't want to go down and that took a lot of time and time from here and that. And he said, I don't need no explanations. I see your heart. Mm -hmm. See, you don't have to sit there and explain nothing to the Lord. He sees your heart. He knows what kind of job you have. He knows how busy your life is. He knows what's going on in your life. He just wants you to give him your all in that short time or in that long time. Right. However the time frame is, he just wants all of it. Yeah, and he right. wants the best quality that you can give him of it. Yeah, that's right. Psalms 119, 10 and 11. With my whole heart, I seek you. Do not allow me to wander from your commandments. 
Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. The Lord says, when you stay hungry and seek in me, I thought, man, there's so many scriptures, Lord. There's so much in here. Where do you go sometimes? Just important to hear the leading of the Holy Spirit. And he led me right to that scripture. And I said, that just jumped right off the page to me. (laughs) And I thought, walking out his word, that's what he's called us to do. And staying hungry for it. When you hunger for it, he will lead you through your hunger for his word. He'll speak to you. He'll guide you through it. Knowing, not just saying it, but knowing it, putting it to action is a very vital part of our relationship with him. When he spoke that to me, it was like ding, 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 ding. Knowing how important it is that, oh, all right. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? I'm doing good, guys. I got about 25 minutes, not much longer. (laughs) Walking it out is his word. That is living it, not just saying it, knowing it, but putting it into actions. It's a very vital part of our relationship with him. Let everyone see the real fruit of the word of God being hidden inside of your heart. It is his resurrection power inside of you that will help you be a doer, a walker of his word, and not just a hearer, a talker only. When you are able to be that one that's going to walk it out, you are going to have to have the resurrection power inside of you making that way for you because ones that talk it and don't have any actions or no fruit that comes forth from it, There's no resurrection power because the resurrection power brings forth life. That's right. An abundant life. You should see much fruit in your life when you are walking the word out with him. Psalms 4.3 says, Know that the Lord set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When he gave me that scripture, I said, Lord, that's good. He said, I need my people to know that I see and I have set apart the faithful for me. He sees your faithfulness, each one of your faithfulness to him. And he is Psalms 4.3. And he hears when you call. He said, I heard you calling when you're praying for your grandson. I heard you call when you're praying for Jenny. I hear you calling when we're praying for any prayers that were given to the Lord, anything we're going through in life. He says, because you're faithful to me, and because you're faithful, I have an ear and I hear. So I said, Lord, that is beautiful. Staying hungry, sitting at his feet, desiring all of his word and who he is, that will show you how pleased he is with the faithfulness of you getting into his word and studying it and thinking about it and letting him give you fresh revelation of what he is speaking to you. Yes, amen. Yes. Last but not least, here we go, Eddie. Keep your praise on. <laughs> keep your praise on. He was just saying as I came in this morning, he said, I'm getting my praise on. And I said, Woo, brother, that's my last part of my message. I said, You're getting ready to preach it. He said, Amen. I'm going to need to hear that. You know, in order for that resurrection power to really rise up with inside of you, you've got to keep your praise on. It's not going to come alive. It's not going to be seen. It's not going to be heard. And it's not going to be felt if you don't praise him. And to begin to praise him when you don't feel like it, when you don't want to, when you're tired and you're weak and you're down and you're out. But how beautiful it is when he places inside of you that resurrection power that will begin to come forth and well up like bubbles inside of you, the rivers of life flowing to say, I will praise the Lord continually no matter what. I will choose to put him first in my life today, in my circumstances, in my heart, in my situation, in my workplace. It doesn't matter what's going on in your home or your workplace. At church, my praise will always be on. And when you have that praise on, there is power in the praise. Our pastor preached that. Power in your praise. And that resurrection power is in your praise. Psalms 108.1. Uh, I said, this is a perfect scripture for me because this is me all the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, my heart is determined. Yeah. My heart is determined. My heart is determined. No matter what comes against me, 
no matter what's happening around me, my heart is determined that I will sing and give praise with all my heart, a whole heart, holding nothing back, praising your way through, because that's where your victory comes, church, is through your praise. Praise your way out. Keeping your praise on. Psalms 35, 28. My tongue will speak righteousness of your praise all the day long. How good he is to us. Continually, when I get in those places or things want to come against me and I'm down and out and despaired and woe is me, when I begin to think of all the past that he's brought me through and all those (laughs) past victories that I'm standing here today to say, my God is victorious no matter what I'm facing at this second and moment, no matter what we were hearing in the hospital. And you know, it's amazing because you have so many spirits there and and it's so hard to sometimes uh, uh, push them back and not hear all that's going on around you. But I can tell you so many times when I laid in the bed with my Elijah or laid on the couch the nights that I stayed there, I said, Lord, my praise is on. My praise is on, and I'm praising you all the way till I fall asleep. I'll praise you all the way when I wake in the morning. I'll praise you all day long, and I'll praise you all night. And that is what keeps you going because it strengthens you. It's that resurrection power that comes forth, that brings life as you continually praise your way through and keeping your praise on. Last but not least, Psalms 138. I'm closing and winding down. 138, 1 through 3. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will worship toward your holy temple and your praise and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth. For you have exalted your word above all your name. On the day I called, you answered me and strengthened me in my soul. Oh, my goodness. If that isn't going to help you to keep your praise on, knowing that as you come before him and you lay it all at his feet, giving everything to him. You know, you might not even just be going through a battle. You just might just be downright tired. I don't know about you, but sometimes the older I get, the more tired I seem to get. Doesn't mean that I have anything sometimes coming against me. But even through the tiredness or becoming weary, I get at his feet and I praise him and I worship him. He begins to strengthen me. He begins to strengthen my soul, yes, my heart. Yes. He begins to uplift me because my focus is on him mm. and not myself and what I'm feeling or what I'm going through. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, continually keep me with that mindset because, see, quickly, the enemy doesn't want you to go there because he doesn't want you to be free in it. He wants you to keep thinking about what's coming against you and what you're feeling. I'm so tired. I had a really rough week at work, or I'm really going through this, or I'm going through that. But I said, Lord, help me to get to that place that I will have that attitude continually to keep my praise on no matter what, no matter what. And you'll see it, and you'll see the difference in yourself. You'll feel the difference even in your atmosphere that you're walking in and the surroundings of where you're at when you begin to praise him continually. His praise that comes forth out of your mouth will allow the Lord to watch over his word, to perform it, and then he will settle it forever in your heart. He told me it's so important. If you can get to that place to keep that praise on, he said, I watch over my word in your life, the word here is you read it and bring forth life to perform it. It's going to come to pass. What are you standing? What are you believing on? Even prophetic words spoken over your life. What are you believing for? What are you believing him for? He's going to watch over it. You're going to see it come to pass as you continue to keep your praise on. Keep your praise on and see the resurrection power of who he is rise up within you and make a way for you to continue to endure the race that he has called you to run. 
Let the resurrection power of who he is to live and dwell inside of you take that place that will help you to know him, number one, for who he is in your life. Number two, to walk it out. Number three, to always stay hungry and seeking him continually, no matter what you go through in life. And the last but not least, Keep your praise on yeah. through these things and many more, I'm sure. But I said, Lord, just a couple's all that I need to know the importance for your people to know the resurrection power truly lives and dwells inside of them, making a way for them, no matter what they're going through. The way maker has already made that way, has already prepared that path, that road for them to go down, yeah. knowing the victory's already been theirs. It's Amen. already won. Amen. It's already been nailed to the cross. It's already been taken care of. There's nothing, nothing new to the Lord. That's right. wow. Nothing. So be encouraged today, church, mm. knowing. And not take it like, you know, I, I've heard that all my life. Oh, the resurrection power of Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah, he lives. He's not dead. He's alive. How do we all respond to that? Do we really all live that way? I mean, he really very nicely, the Lord really rebuked me reading that. He said, do you really, really know? Do you really know who lives inside of you? Really? Really? Oh, we'll see, because we're all here together. Woo! Cheer my mother on. But how do you really know? Is that resurrection power real in your life? Is it being demonstrated Come in on. your life? This is a place in the last days that he is truly calling us, because as John even gave that prophetic word today, we have no clue what the world is about to face. But praise yes. God, we know what we're about to face because we have the resurrection power of the yes. way maker inside yes. of us, making a way. No matter what comes against this world, you've got to know who you are in Christ. Yes. And be confident, knowing that no gates of hell will prevail against you as you move forward and what God has called you to. If he's called you to it, he'll back you up in it. That's right. Bring you and he's going to back you up with his power, with his might, with his strength, with his glory. It's his honor. And I'm so grateful and so thankful for it. Lord, we come before you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. I thank you for the resurrection power that truly lives inside of every single one of us. I thank you for a fresh revelation, Lord, of knowing who you are in our lives. That, Lord, I know sometimes we have heard it time and time again, and we grab a hold of it, but it's only sometimes for a temporary moment. But, Lord, let this be settled in us today to transform our hearts this day, knowing who we are in you and what we carry, the power of who you are, your life, the resurrection life of Jesus Christ that died on the cross for us, knowing who we are, that new creature, a creation of you, Lord. The old things have passed away. The old man is gone. Let the new arise today of who you are in the resurrection power and the way maker that you make a way for every single one of us, no matter what we face and go through. We are excited it's already been nailed to the cross, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, even in our brokenness, in our hearts that are grief and sorrow. You showed me how beautiful it is that we allow you to pick us back up with your resurrection power, bringing forth new fresh life and a broken heart, not understanding, not knowing why, but it's okay because our trust is fully put in you. Yes. Our faith is truly in you, Lord, and not in anything else or anyone else. Yes. Oh, we can grab a hold 
of who you are this day. Our lives will truly never be the same. Every heart in this place, let their lives be shifted and changed today, including myself, knowing who lives and dwells inside of me, not taking it for lightly who you are in my heart and in my life, Jesus. We give you all praise, all glory, and all honor for this beautiful day that you have given us and blessed us with, with your resurrection power that makes a way for us as our way maker. Yes. In Jesus' yes. precious holy name, amen. amen.